welcome to our special coverage of a developing story in Pakistan. It's been dubbed the Memogate controversy by the global media. And in Pakistan, it's triggered a storm, a public battle between the Pakistan's mi military on the one hand and the civilian government on the other. The civilian government, that's President Asif Ali Zardari's government, is already beleaguered as the Supreme Court asks it to reopen an old corruption case against the president, asking it to write a letter to Swiss authorities to reopen and reinvestigate the case. The civilian government had the Prime Minister appearing in person in court. It's got a two-week reprieve. But in the meantime, Mansoor Rajaz, American-based businessman who first went public with the memo, allegations in which uh, suggest that the civilian government, right after Osama bin Laden was killed, tried to reach out covertly to the administration in America to avert a military coup. The moment he went public with this, that's what started the entire crisis that has led to a public battle between the army in Pakistan and the civilian government. Now questions are being asked by the global media. Will Mansoor Rajaz testify at all? Why did he not keep his date with the court on the 16th of this month? And what will he say in his testimony? Well, joining us now exclusively from London is Mansoor Rajaz himself. Mr. Ijaz, uh, thanks for speaking to us on this special program on NDTV. I must first start by asking you what many Pakistanis have been asking uh, in the media there. I've just come back from a week in Islamabad. And much of the media said you failed to keep your date with the court. Why was that? Well, between the time that they set the first date, uh, Burka, and the time that they set the second date, there were a number of uh, events that took place. Uh, the, what I would call the sort of the, the, the threat proce process became quite intense uh, against me, against members of my family, and things like that. And, you know, if it was only me making the decision, I wouldn't uh, care one damn. To be very frank with you, I'm not afraid of any of these guys. They can make all the threats that they want to, and it won't deter me from coming over there. But unfortunately, uh, for, you know, this process, I run, you know, uh, businesses. I have partners. I have shareholders. Uh, but most importantly, I've got my family to consider. And I had to make sure that there was at least the, the, the level of comfort that would ensure my family felt secure about the fact that I was, you know, taking what I would call a, a measured risk, a calculated risk, uh, in being, you know, getting on the airplane and going over there to see, you know, the, the, the people at the commission. So that it was just, you know, a matter of getting certain uh, logistics issues sorted out that had to be done. And then some of my business partners and shareholders insisted on making sure that we have authorities in place that would uh, trigger in in case, God forbid, something did happen to me while I was there. Could you specify who you have received these threats from and uh, who do you believe is behind them? Because you have said consistently that you're being threatened. By whom? Yeah. Well, they're, they're random. I mean, they're, the email address and so forth, I sort of stopped wasting time trying to track them down. Um, we did give uh, just about every single one of them. We gave them to both the Pakistani authorities and certain authorities here in Europe uh, to make sure that they knew because the internet addresses could be tracked down and so forth. Um, several of them were very specific. Uh, one or two of them were, you know, uh, more blunt and, uh, you know, broad-based. Uh, but the, the reality is that, for me, it just doesn't matter who's behind them. Who cares? You know, they're not going to stop me from coming. They can do what they want. And I say it very clearly to the government, to those in the government, to the, the interior minister who has made a lot of different statements and sort of veiled threats and things of that nature uh, against me, against members of my family, trying to drag members of my family into this whole process and so forth. This, all this stuff is just hustle, you know, hullabaloo, blah, blah. You know, I wish I could use the words I want to on nice TV, but I can't. Uh, but it's, none of that's going to deter me. I'm coming. I'm going to tell the truth. I'm going to put the truth on the record forcefully. And I'm going to make sure that the people of Pakistan finally are able to hold their governments accountable for the actions that they take in their name. Now, the Interior Minister Rehman Malik said in an interview to me in Islamabad uh, that there is every yeah. chance that you could be charged with treason because he says that you have gone on record to say that you were instrumental in toppling uh, former Prime Minister Benazir Bhutto's government at one point in history. And he said, and he said yeah. this in uh, Pakistan's uh, Senate and National Assembly as well, how can one man be so yeah. powerful that he can topple a government? 
Well, first of all, Ramon Mullick is, is someone who I believe is prone to make statements of such exaggeration that he doesn't even understand what the facts are. The facts are the following. In uh, 1995, uh, me, along with a large number of Pakistani Americans, helped uh, Benazir Bhutto's government come close to the Clinton administration and resurrect the relationship between the U.S. and, and Pakistan. Uh, at the end of that year, we got uh, certain reports, I got certain reports in my hands that demonstrated that there was the possibility that she and other members of her family uh, were, shall we say, uh, not acting in the best interest of the nation when it came to uh, the way in which the national treasury uh, resources were being spent. And so I wrote two op-ed pieces, one in the Wall Street Journal in June of 1996, in which I challenged the IMF's prescription for how they were giving money to Pakistan and not keeping track of how that money was being spent. And in the second one I, it, that was written in October of 1996, uh, I outlined and detailed what everybody now knows are these corruption cases against uh, uh, President Asif Ali Zardari, against uh, the, the, the former uh, slain Prime Minister Benazir Bhutto, uh, and other members of the, the larger clan, if you will, that were part of their group. These are facts that are on the record. So he can say, I'm responsible for all of that, all he wants to. But the reality is that I drew my conclusions as an op-ed writer directly from facts that were available to me at that time. And therefore, these you know, uh, threats are just, you know, it's a paper tiger just you know, trying to huff and puff and try to blow the house down before I get there because they think that they can try to intimidate me and not coming. And I can tell them straight to their face right now, I'm coming. There's nothing you can do to stop me from coming to Pakistan. NDTV's Cricket app, Android and iPhone, faster scorecard, special analysis, and much more. Download free, ndtv.com slash apps.